Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well, then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. folks online, either via text message or DM or or anything in the comment section, it's like, hey, what can I deduct? Or they'll say, can I deduct and then insert something here, right? Very specific. And I've gone through this before on the show on how to kind of figure out if something's deductible. But one thing that keeps popping up is that folks are asking, can I deduct my groceries? And while I am tempted (laughs) to just give an outright, no, you can't, I actually looked into it and I really thought about it. And there are definitely some scenarios where this could actually be deductible, and which is what I'm going to unpack in today's episode. So let me just start off with one thing that I'm going to review the definition of deductible real quick, which is ordinary and necessary for your business. So If you're talking about making groceries a business expense deduction, you've got to have a compelling business case. And spoiler alert, a a business case does not include, well, I need to eat, I need to be alive, or I need to be healthy in order to be an entrepreneur. Those are all inherent things we all need as humans. So it's not special to a business owner. What we have to unpack is situations and circumstances, context that can be applied to make it more of a business expense. So I'm going to go through a few examples with you. So for example, the the scenario where you go to the grocery store and you're going in order to purchase food items or, or anything for a business meal that you're hosting at your house. So basically, instead of going to a restaurant, you're purchasing items from a grocery store. This could also be like, I, I'll, immediately what I think of is going to Whole Foods and going through like the buffet thing, right? That can also count as a business meal if, if, you're, if the nature of the meal is business related. And you can also buy groceries if you're going to prepare a business meal, say at your home. And what I would do is A, make sure that you separately pay for anything for a business meal aside from personal groceries. And the reason I say this is you want to be able to show itemized specifically what you bought, that it it kind of fits the bill for what would be in a business meal. Like if you're going to Costco <laughs> and there's like paper towels, toilet paper, you know, detergent and all this stuff on the bill, and you're trying to deduct the whole, whole bill, this is not going to fly. So you want to make sure that you're specifically identifying the stuff that you'll need for business. And the other thing is now that we're out of 2022, that business meals are now back to being 50% deductible. So that also means that these would be 50% deductible as well. So again, business meals being a key context where you could actually potentially deduct groceries. And then now the other one would be, and I've worked with a few folks who do this, if you need to purchase groceries as supplies for your business, let's say you are a private chef and you have to provide your own meals. Let's say you're a nutritionist and you need to either provide your own recipes, your own meals. You want to test out a recipe before you put it in a cookbook. You want to test out a recipe before you put it in your nutrition program. If there are specific business needs to preparing these meals, then I would say that you should definitely definitely consider if you need to deduct your groceries. I think anyone who deals with food in their profession, in their business, could potentially be you know, eligible for this deduction. And you also want to look at if you have a home office or if you have an office space and you have clients come visit your office space, you may want to provide snacks and other things for them. Now, this is also a potential business deduction because it's for the benefit of your visitors. It's also designed to be The whole deductibility of this is designed to be a deduction based on the consumption of food for the benefit of the other person. So not personal consumption. Like you don't get to go buy a basket of treats, throw it in your home office, eat it all yourself. It's not how it works. You basically have to make it available to clients who come and visit 
and it should be for their benefit. And th- those are kind of the, the business expense reasons why you could potentially deduct it. Now we gonna, we're going to get into the other areas of your tax return where this could actually be a deduction. So I didn't even, th- and by the way, I didn't really think of this until I really sat down thinking, how could someone deduct their groceries? And I'm thinking about the business reasons. But now also, let's dive into there is a charitable component. So now if you go purchase food at the grocery store, and again, this is not for your personal consumption. If you purchase food, then you could potentially get a deduction if you're donating that food to the local food pantry, to a 501c3 charity. Also, if you are, let's say you're baking a pie for a bake sale for the church or for something like that. If it's, again, for a the benefit of a 501c3, then this is potentially a charitable donation because you're donating your uh, your goods, your you know products for for donation for sale, and that would be something that you could potentially write off. Now, keep in mind with charitable donations that you're only really getting a tax benefit if you're itemizing. So, if you're itemizing your deductions, you'll be able to deduct any charitable contributions. However, if you're taking the standard deduction, which keeps going up year after year lately. If you're taking the standard deduction, then charitable donations don't really benefit you as much. So you want to make sure that if you're going to go crazy (laughs) trying to deduct all of these different things that you're donating, just remember that it may or may not actually benefit you on the bottom line of your your, uh, tax return. So the last thing is medical expenses. Now, this is pretty much a rarity. You want to look at, can I deduct food or groceries in conjunction with a prescribed diet from a doctor, or if the doctor is specifically prescribing a type of food that you need to eat. That is pretty rare, but it's possible. Because if you have to buy these things because the doctor said you have to, the doctor said that you have to purchase these things, you have to eat these things, then you are kind of in a corner and you have to spend this money. The idea behind the out-of-pocket medical expenses, which again, just like charity, is an itemized deduction. So you want to make sure that you're going to get the benefit out of this. But what it's designed to do is say, when you're painted into a corner and you have to spend money out of pocket because your insurance doesn't cover it, or because for whatever reason, your doctor prescribed something and and you don't have another means to pay for it, you have to pay for it out of pocket, then you have the ability to deduct that up to a certain limit. So now we have to look at, is there a compelling reason, medical reason, to pay for certain items that you're purchasing in the grocery store. That's it. So keep in mind that your, you know, regular routine grocery trip, your typical, you know, order from the grocery store, if you're getting it delivered even, all of that is generally not deductible if it's just your personal consumption, just your groceries, just your, you know, typical trip. But there are ways to make this, you know, business related in certain instances, which we went over today. So Go figure. There is a way to deduct your groceries. I'm really, <laughs> I'm happy to say that there are yes answers to that question. So if you want more episodes like this where we unpack specific deductions, please send me a text message at 860-609-6374. And I would love to hear more about what specific items you would like to deduct in your business and we can figure out how to make that happen. Sometimes don't you wish you could just Google or ask ChatGPT what is deductible for your taxes? I wish it were that easy, but the truth is that deducting something can really vary and it's really hard to get a straight answer for your business in particular, but I made something to help. My free tax deduction guide walks you through hundreds of example tax deductions that can apply to your business, along with a mini training on what actually makes something deductible so you can add more to your list and cater it to your specific industry or type of business. This is all for free and it's at the link in the show notes. Go check it out. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.